we out here. Four o'clock in the morning. Get a good nighttime view of the city though. Six inches yesterday. Today I gotta evaporate this ice stuff. Trying to figure out why. Should have set on 45. Oh man, that's definitely bigger than six inches right here. Look how deep that is. That's definitely about. Damn. That's some Minnesota shit. Ugh. Look at that shit. Take your whole left. This the thing is iced up right here. Just raise the thermostat up, make sure the condenser is cutting off. Because it shouldn't be icing up. Well, it is cutting off, so that's a good sign. I don't know, maybe the guys is working here, man. Be messing with the thermostat. Probably turn that shit the wrong way, who knows. Fuck. Uh. All right. Back to work. Gonna install today. Putting some units on top of the roof. They brought up the big boy. Putting on top of the roof. It's gonna be a fun day.
top installation uh, we set the units down and everything put them in place secured them uh, so now we're just waiting for the duct team the duct duct groups and going put the duct work in connect it then we're gonna go back and you know, connect the electricity and and do all that fun stuff so now I'm, I'm at Hunts Point Market over to uh, another customer over here um, this unit is not working at all Evaporator or the condenser. So, about to come over here and see what's good, man. Let's go. It's a busy day today. All right, so the condenser outside was good. It had power. Uh, everything was working properly. Um, but the evaporator, as you see, ESP doesn't have any power. Um, the box here is getting power. All these are hot. Only thing is those fuses there, respect there. I'm not getting any continuity with those fuses. So I think those fuses are blown. But as someone told me, you always want to find out if that's the case, why did they blow before you even just throw some new fuses in the box. So uh, let me see here and try to figure out what could have caused them to blow. All right. All right, got two new fuses to replace the old ones. Got to pop these bad boys in and uh, see if we get back on. I didn't see anything uh, that would make it blow in terms of wire um, out or wires touching or water into the unit. So I'm um, assuming it was just a power surge, uh, you know, that blew them out. So. Gonna put these back in and uh, see what happens. All right, so I got the fuses in. So let's go put the power back on and see what happens, man. Uh, hopefully this is it. Oh shit, lights back on. process that it follows. When we turn it down, it probably pumped down the system automatically. So it's now it's uh, open up the solenoid valve and um, releasing the refrigerant back into the vap. Let's go outside and see if this compressor is running. run for a minute keep an eye on it see what, what happens all right so you see the fridge is coming to the, the unit temperature is starting to drop in here mushroom box so temperature is very important
normally want this box uh, just above freezing, so just above 32, around 34, uh, 35 is what they really want to keep the box around. As you see, they had to take all everything out of here. These mushrooms are very, very particular about the temperature they need to be stored in. So you see, control board has power. Put the fuses back in up there. Everything seems to be okay right now. All right, guys. Very good. I'm gonna sit here and get down to 35, 34. Oh, man, I feel it. It's cold. Let's see All right. Here we go. All right, guys. So today, um, I've been dealing with this box about about a week. It's been having a lot of shorts. We came to the conclusion that it's the motors and the wire harness. So we're actually gonna replace that today. That's what we're in the process. First, I'm gonna do the wire harness and see if there's a, uh, some kind of defect in the wire harness that, that allows the motor to keep blowing fuses. Place that today, see how it goes overnight. And if uh, that doesn't work, then we're gonna replace all these motors. So I'm gonna take all this stuff down. Got the wire harness right here. Uh, you know, shout out to the wall. Uh, the wall, everything, baby. But uh, yeah, let's get it done. All right. So for me, I think the best way to uh, get access is drop the drain pan. I seen some people actually take all the freaking fan motors out and and, and shit like that to get to the wiring in the bottom. Um, but always start as long as the drain pan is dry and everything easier, just to drop the drain pan and get up in here. So right here is what we're replacing today. It's just wiring horns that goes all the way across and connects all the motors in the series. Uh, so what we're thinking is that uh, inside these wiring harnesses, probably water or something got in there and when electricity is applied to it, it's uh, basically uh, like surging or warping and bouncing the power back. To the box, which is causing the fuse, which is causing the fuses to blow every time. So we're gonna place this harness and see if that's the case. If not, then uh, we have most likely have a motor that's ramping up and uh, blowing a fuse. But hopefully it's the harness. We'll see. But I got motors also just in case. All right, let's go. All right, so we got the wire harness out. Old one right here. Took it out already. So like I was saying, uh, what we also I'm gonna do for this one, I think. See in the middle connections here. I think the water could have went down into the hole down the bottom here. You know, especially when it's bent and shit. So these new ones I have, I'm gonna. Put some silicone back here. Try to fill the hole up and uh, put some electrical tape around it. Maybe to help prevent water maybe getting in down inside the back of this these connections. I don't know why they built it like that. They should have built it with like with a with a rubber mold or something around here to protect water from getting from through the back. But you can definitely see the crack like in the back when it's bent. Move my hand. Shit. See the crack in there? So you can definitely see the crack in the back where the water could get down in the back of it. Alright, I'm about to put this new one in. Same situation. Alright, so we got the new harness in, guys. You got uh, put silicone, like I said, in the back, like I was telling you guys. Put the electrical tape around it as well to try to help. Uh, maybe prevent moisture and water getting in the back to hold it in. So I got all the way down the line. 
Uh, and it's all set up, it's ready to go. So let me uh, start this box back up and let's see what happens, man. Fingers crossed. Looks like full speed. Sounds like full speed. All right, guys. So I got another issue with a box out here. So basically this, uh, this blower here was working, except for this motor. Now this blower um, does have a harness in it, so all the motors are connected to one power harness. But this one motor was off. Uh, so at first I thought maybe it was a bad motor, but then I open it up, and as you see we have a cut wire here that connects from the other motor. So I'm gonna have to rewire this uh, with a new wire to connect this motor back. And hopefully, the motor's good, hopefully, and uh, get this box back going. So let's see. All right, so I rewired uh, the motor. Got this one here. Ran a new wire all the way over. Connected over here. Zip tied it up uh, up here. It's tight, so the fan hopefully won't cut it. But what it looks like is uh, I don't know if you can see, but the little back here with my fingers. Let me see. Can't even see. But up in this little hole where up there in the top, where it goes through to the other side, um, it's like it got probably got cut there. Normally there's a little plastic thing there that it, the wires go through, but the plastic thing is missing. So the wires is rubbing against this aluminum slot in the top. So probably as the wind blows or uh, the wires move back and forth, uh, it's like rubbing the wire and it's cutting it. So I try to put some black tape, electrical tape around the sharp edges of that thing to see if that'll limit that from happening. And also I kind of tighten it up so hopefully it doesn't move that much so we'll see but that seems like what happened and I'm gonna put it back together and see if they start back up hopefully like I said that was the issue all right so it's back working that was the issue they don't call me young super tech for nothing all right let's go all right guys so I got this motor out all the rest of them are on See in the room. This is a connected to E11, which is an E11 over there as well. Uh, and this one is off. Uh, I know this. This is this is connected to a rack system that's on the roof. I know um, this week the main breaker for that rack system blew, and all the fans in this whole building section went out. So that could have, uh, I don't know, affected these fans as well. Because both of them, it's really rare sometimes for both of them to be out. Um, but also, I think these are wired in maybe a series. So if one goes out, the other one, I haven't took this one off yet to see. But also, as I pull this cover off, looking at it, right? See this, uh, let's see. Oh, see that right here? The wire has been, uh, the wire is exposed. So it could have shortened something out. Uh, I could touch something. So it could be also something else that I could have happened. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna check the voltage, to make sure there's wire uh, power going into these motors. If there's power going to these motors, and everything is connected properly. Um, they're most likely just these fans that blew out. Bad fans. Uh, let see these. Bad fans are, uh, let's see. I'm trying to see the capacitor back there, but, um, 
for both of them to be like that though, you know? So I'm gonna check them out, check the motors out, see if they got power, see if they're running. Um, go from there, man. Let's go. All right, you see I got them back running. They had a strip wire, blew some fuses. Motor is still good. Uh, I think I definitely have to change the uh, either the motor capacitor on this one though soon. So it's running a little slower. But uh, I got some other calls, so I can't do it today. Good things in here running, man. All right. All right, guys. So this is the condenser. Look at that light. It's almost. I haven't even been in a box yet. Right now, let's put it on the manual defrost. All right, let's go check a look and see how the box looks. I can only imagine. All right, guys, so this is inside the box. See this? It's like a winter wonderland in here. Everything's frozen. Got it on defrost right now. Can't really use hot water in here because of the product. So I'm gonna try to use the B tank. See if I can melt a little bit of this ice around the guard and the fans because everything right now. See if we can get this back running as fast as possible. Alright. Like I'm on a ski trip right now. So usually when you have ice and stuff that's bad, you end up with a broken fan and a bad motor. So this is the second, um, see what happens, see all this ice, this ice gets stuck in there, on this grill, and it just breaks the damn fan. So I got two fans down right now. I don't know about the motors yet, because I still have it on defrost. The best thing to use is hot water, but, uh, Good thing this is cold water, but it's still warmer than the ice, so it'll melt. It's all caused because this mainly this door, humidity, this door doesn't seal, so a lot of humidity goes in this box. And as you know, humidity is very heavy. It gets on the uh, evaporator, turns the some liquid, and ices up over the grill and uh, freezes up everything. What's going on, guys? It's cold as shit. It's like 24 right now outside, man. It's cold outside and it's in the freezes, man. It's crazy. Get those stop though, you know. Had to pump some systems down. The refrigerator is getting too cold. Uh, hope you guys are having a good Friday. Let's go. All right, so it's inside this rack. Ah, I probably can't hear me. I have a mask on. Just inside this rack, um, pumping down some systems. Uh, it's really, like I said, it's really cold here in New York right now. And these rooms are getting below uh, their set points. So I'm pumping, I'm pumping a couple of systems down in the rack overnight. Um, so hopefully none of the product or everything won't freeze up. 